I know, I know, I said a couple of videos ago that I wouldn't review any more X-Files anymore because, well, I've already done these, so what's the point of reviewing another one? Well, this one has a really cool feature. So let's take a closer look. Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Now today we're not going to talk about any sound card. No, this sound card has an I.O. box. Woohoo! And this is the sound card that comes with it, which is a Creative X-Fi Titanium Fatality Champion. It was released back in 2008 and it was the first of the X-Fi series to be PCI Express. All the other ones before this one were of course just PCI. Now when the card was released, just this card, which is the professional version, it was $219, which is really expensive. But also if you wanted to have the I.O. box, it was $299, which is really expensive because in those days, most motherboards just had PCI slots. So there was no real need to upgrade your system because most people, well, they would just reuse their former sound card like I did with this one. It's just the X5 Fatality, the former Fatality. Also, if you wanted to have a newer card or a newer sound card that was PCI Express based and a lot cheaper, you would get this one, the Asus Xonar DX, which is also a very capable card. So why would you buy this? Well, I remember when this card were, or cards were still being sold in the shops and I thought it was the pinnacle of coolness. I mean, there wasn't anything cooler than this, but the price was also really high. The reason why you would get this is just because of this. So, what is this card capable of doing? Well, it has XFi Crystallizer technology, XFi CMSS 3D technology, Dolby Digital support, Creative Alchemy, DHS, DTS, ACO, XRAM and certified UAA compliance for maximum Windows compatibility. Now for this last point, the UAA or Universal Audio Architecture, this is the first card of the X5 series that supports this, which is good news because the drivers will be a bit more stable. When UAA was implemented, EAX was pronounced dead because it couldn't be used anymore. Creative Alchemy or OpenL sort of tried to solve this, some of these issues, but that soon faded into oblivion. By the way, XRAM was nothing more than just some regular DDR memory from Micron running at a very slow 200 MHz. Now here's a sneak peek. In my next video, I will be investigating claims about sound cards and FPSs or frames per second. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you won't miss out on that one. Let's head over to the specifications. So this sound card has 24 bits and 192 kilohertz, which is a sort of standard these days, but back then when the sound card was released, it wasn't so normal. Most onboard solutions were still 16 bits. And even though there were some 24 bits uh, solutions, onboard solutions out there, the quality wasn't as good because the signal to noise ratio was somewhere between 100 and 105, whereas this one had 109 decibels of signal to noise ratio. These days, 109 decibels isn't that impressive anymore, as there are sound cards out there that I have 124 or maybe even 130 decibels of signal to noise ratio. Now, if that's just marketing, I'm not really sure because those numbers are extremely high. But that's something for another video. So what makes this card really interesting is just the I.O. box. So what does that do? The I.O. drive has some cool features from left to right. You have the auxiliary input, which may be of sort of use. You don't have to go under your desk to fiddle around to use those plugs. Then there are the three light indicators, one for gaming mode, one for x CMSS, and one for x crystallizers. You can either press the button or go into the settings of the driver interface to enable this. 
Next to the buttons is a big volume knob that is independent from Windows volume, so it may be interesting. Next to that is the headphone out and microphone in, which is very convenient when using a headset and you don't have the front panel or output. And the far right is the microphone volume, so you can crank up the volume of your microphone when your friends complain that about the volume of your voice. So what's inside this little case? Well, the sound card itself isn't anything special, it's rather standard. Nothing exciting going on here, the same old components used as in many other previous XY cards. Except of course for the Titanium HD, which was an excellent card with really good components. The digital to analog converter used is the Sirius Logic CS4382, which is capable of 24 bits and 192 kHz. The analog to digital converter for the microphone used is the Wolfson WM8775. The analog to digital converter for the line in is the excellent AKM5358. Both of those are capable of 24 bits but only 96 kHz. There's also an amplifier on board in the form of the NJM4556A which is a dual high current operational amplifier. The I.O. drive has hardly anything on it besides a tiny microcontroller, the NXPP89LPC, but that only controls the buttons and the lights on the front. The I.O. drive has a cool headphone out, microphone in, but I was wondering if it is better than the normal front panel option. As I showed in a previous video, the front panel is the cause of a lot of distortion because of electromagnetic interference, so I hope this cable was better shielded and would get better results. So I ran Rightmark Audio Analyzer to find out. The Rightmark Audio Analyzer results for the rear connector are good, as these results show. The frequency response is very good, but there are also some averages on this report. Just a nice and decent sound card. The drop off for the frequency response is well over 20 kHz, so I'm really happy with that. When we look at how this card performs with just the front panel, we see the influence of EMI, or electromagnetic interference. The frequency response doesn't change, because the characteristics of this card stay the same. The noise level goes up, meaning there is more background noise. The dynamic range goes down, meaning that there is a difference between the quietest sound and the loudest sound have lessened. The total harmonic distortion didn't change as well, but that was to be expected. The intermodular distortion and noise, uh, noise has gone up, basically saying that there is more noise on the line. And stereo crosstalk also has gone up, meaning that some signals from the left has gone to the right and right to the left. And these are the results with the I.O. box. The results have gone down a bit, but there's not as bad as the normal front panel option. It's somewhere between the rear and the front panel, something that this graph illustrates as the I.O. box line is somewhere in the middle. And this is what the driver interface looks like. As you can see, it's very minimalistic, uh, but everything is there. I mean, you can set the entertainment mode, game mode, audio creation mode, uh, speakers if you want to use headphones or even 7.1, your EAX effects if you want to enable them, your X5 uh, CMSS, your crystallizer, and everything else here at the top. Nothing special going on and no fancy meters, nothing else. It's just plain, simple window. So during my listening sessions I was trying to find, well, the sound of my former X5 card, the X5 Fatality card, let's put that one away, uh, but I didn't get that same feeling. I mean, the sound quality was really good, the bass was there, it wasn't really deep bass, but it was bassy enough, um, it wasn't overpowered in the bass section. The middle section, in my opinion, that's where creative cards are really good at. It's really nice it was you could hear the conversations really well it wasn't overpowered it wasn't annoying 
the, 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 the higher ends it was a bit sharpish. Uh, it didn't really get annoying, but there was a bit too much highs for me, for my liking. Overall, this sound card sounded great. Um, it wasn't anything too spectacular, and it was, to my opinion, just a bit better than today's onboard solutions. So, would I recommend this sound card? Well, as with all other X5 cards, I really wanted to love this one as well. I mean, I love the X5 Fatality, which I've shown you before. I was in love with the Titan HD, which, well, sound quality wise, it is the best X5 out there with really good components. I was in love, or still am in love with the ESI uh, X5 NRG uh, sound card, which is well, really well built. And I'm, well, I just fell in love with that one as well. And I've also sort of fallen in love with this one as well. Uh, but for something really curious, I mean, it's just a really niche kind of sound card that it has an I.O. box. I don't have that many sound cards which have the uh, breakout box or I.O. box. But is there really any other point in getting it besides the quirky I.O. box? Well, um, the driver interface, well, it is workable. I mean, it does the trick, but there's no real cool meters. There's no other things going on. It doesn't look interesting. It's just a simple Windows thing. Uh, sound quality wise, it is just a bit better than your onboard sound. Um, what else? Well, the I.O. box itself, it will introduce EMI, okay? It is less than standard from panel uh, usage, but there is still some electromagnetic interference or, well, um, noise introduced into your sound. And that's something you do not want to have. So I wouldn't recommend this sound card, how cool it may look uh, either way. But is there any other scenario that I would think that this sound card would be, well, of use? And yes, there is. If you are going to do a retro build, of course, uh, there are still a lot of people out there who make retro builds and I must applaud them because I think it's really cool. Back then in 2008, 2009, when this card was released, I mean, in my opinion, it was the pinnacle of coolness. I may be wrong, but it's just my humble opinion. It was really cool. So why not put it into your retro build? So that's it for me for today. Thank you for making it all the way to the end again. And I hope to see you in the next one, which will be about frames per second and sound cards. Really interesting. I've done a lot of research for that one. Thank you for now. See you then. Bye bye.